I've got the uh, rifle attached. I, I sketched it in. I'm, I'll tell you more about that when I come back. Anyway, that's uh, starting to put the figure together and working out the uh, position for the uh, Hawkins rifle that he will have in his hand. Time to play with some play. All right, I'm going to be working on him a little bit today. I, I made a sketch of a rifle, of a Hawkins rifle. I'm going to work on his body today and uh, get it tuned up so I can put clothes on. And also, I did a kind of a rough sketch of uh, his Hawkins rifle that he will be carrying. Uh, he's going to have it out of the sheath. It's going to be... One that I'm going to put a lot of detail in. and uh, But I'm waiting for... So the barrel of the the uh, Hawkins was an octagon-shaped barrel. And uh, I ordered some brass tubes that are about the size of the barrel that I need to have on this uh, scaled uh, Hawkins rifle that I'm making for him. Um, and that will be part of my rifle that I will sculpt uh, when I get that. I don't know. I could be getting a tubing. <coughs> Sorry, I got a cough this morning. I might be getting the tubing sometime at, towards the end of the month. But uh, I thought I, I used it before the tu this type of tubing for another rifle I had to do that had a octagon shaped barrel. <clears throat> and it worked out really well. And so I'm just going to go ahead and use that. Now I'm not going to put a lot of detail in his anatomy. Because it's going to be clothed. But i got to have the uh, anatomy under the clothing. Before I can... Uh, to make it more believable is what I'm trying to think of saying here. Um, my friend is leaving today. And uh, going traveling and visiting other friends. And uh, so I'm going to uh, be distracted a little bit, I think, today because we're talking and stuff like that. Okay, let me get uh, this a little bit better and I'll be right back. Let me tell you a little about Jim Bridger. There's a gentleman who knew Jim Bridger and was asked to describe him. And they said that he was well over six feet tall. When he stood up, he was straight as an arrow. His body uh, stature was. And uh, must have been some person to see. Anyway, he trapped around here. He uh, actually had a battle with uh, some uh, Blackfoot Indians just south of here, about 40 miles. There's a campground where they had the battle, where the village was down south of here. And... Uh, he and his flathead Indian friends uh, walked all over this valley. And there's a famous uh, area called uh, Cowboy Heaven, which was uh, on the eastern side of the valley here up in the mountains. And they had a game trail that they followed that comes down into this valley. This valley had a lot of buffalo at one time, and uh, it was a major hunting ground in the wind in the spring, or I mean in the uh, yeah in the spring and the summer. <coughs> a lot of tribes would come together uh, and 
had a truce, sort of, you might say, between them uh, while they were here in this valley uh, to be able to hunt for their winter food and, you know, harvesting buffalo and elk and such. Now this line right here is looking too big, so I'm going to take it down quite a bit. Now I took it down quite too much. <laughs> it's starting to look uh, too bulky. I don't want it to be too bulky. Um, he'd have been strong. He had to be strong. Uh, what they did was very physical and uh, demanded strength but uh, I don't want to make them you know built like Superman or something like that I just uh, wanted to be a normal person it was extraordinary that bit, that looks better. My uncle, who uh, gave me a lot of pointers when I was starting sculpting, when I was back in the 70s and uh, early 70s, he always told me you got to have anatomy under the clothing. You can't have a bag of bones and meat with clothing on it, you have to have some kind of shape underneath the clothing. It was good advice. I, re I credit a lot of my abilities to the, the guidance he gave me when I was starting out sculpting as a hobby. He lived just a uh, few miles from my home in Sandy, Utah. He lived in Jordan, Utah, which is just across the valley from where I lived in the Salt Lake Valley. His studio was a whole church. It was an old LDS church that uh, was no longer a church and he turned the whole meeting room into his studio and uh, the rest of the building was turned into his home and I think he had his foundry in his basement All right, that's going to be it for today. I'm uh, going to...
going to pick this up uh, next time and I'm just going to go upstairs and go on through my computer. I've got a lot of reference material, a lot of photographs taken at rendezvous, as I said before. And I'm going to just go through them until I see something that kind of interests me or gives me the idea for how I want to put his uh, clothing on. I'm the, the idea I have is the wind is blowing strongly from back, and I, it's, kind of, it's kind of the theme of this piece. And the mane of the horse is going to be blowing in the wind. It's all going to be blowing like he's being pushed forward. And the fringe will be blown, blowing forward too. And it'll add to the design of the whole piece. So I normally wouldn't put a lot of fringe on his clothing, but I think it'll add, actually add to the uh, total composition. All right, see you guys next time. Have a great night. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. It really would help me. Also, check out the link below this video. It will take you to a review of my nine instructional videos that could be very helpful to you if you're thinking of sculpting. Good night, everybody.